Tonight on Dwight News. U.S. President Donald Trump calls for a special summit in the U.S. next year as some regional leaders, including President Rodrigo Duterte, skip the ASEAN-U.S. summit. Expressway management recommend the use of radio frequency identification or RFID to ease congestion at toll plazas. Two McKenny products test positive for African swine fever virus. The death toll in Mindanao earthquakes climbs to 22. Nearly 30,000 infrastructures damaged. And Filipinos channel the spirit of Bayanihan by helping thousands of earthquake victims in the country's south. Good evening. A U.S. envoy denounced Chinese intimidation in the South China Sea at a meeting of Southeast Asian leaders. Meanwhile, top ASEAN leaders, including President Rodrigo Duterte, did not attend today's summit with the United States, with the majority opting to send their respective foreign ministers. From Bangkok, Thailand, Kath Dumraos will tell us why live. Kath, go ahead. Good evening. Good evening, Diego. U.S. President Donald Trump has invited Southeast Asian leaders to a special summit in the United States early next year after skipping their ongoing annual summit here in Thailand. He was represented by U.S. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien. Diego, at the ASEAN-U.S. Summit, Mr. O'Brien read out a letter from the U.S. President. In his letter, President Trump assured leaders that his special envoy was well-placed to speak authoritatively on issues that were of interest to both the U.S. and ASEAN. I would also like to take this opportunity to offer an invitation to the leaders of ASEAN to join me in the United States for a special summit meeting at a time of mutual convenience in the first quarter of 2020. This will provide an excellent opportunity for us to broaden and deepen our cooperation on matters of great importance to the nearly 1 billion people the United States and the ASEAN nations have the privilege to represent. The American people and I hope to see you in the United States soon. Sincerely, Donald J. Trump. President Trump also had strong words for China's behavior in the South China Sea. Beijing has used intimidation to try to stop ASEAN nations from exploiting their offshore resources, blocking access to $2.5 trillion in oil and gas reserves alone. These tactics go against the rules of respect, fairness, and international law. The region has no interest in a new imperial era where a big country can rule others on the theory that might makes right. Only Lao Prime Minister Thon Glun Sisulit, Vietnam Prime Minister Nguyen Suan Phuc, and Thailand Prime Minister Prayut Chan-o-Cha, who chairs this year's ASEAN, were the heads of state who attended the ASEAN-US Summit. President Rodrigo Duterte and several other ASEAN heads of state skipped the scheduled ASEAN-United States Summit today. President Duterte was represented by Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr. On the sidelines of the 14th ASEAN East Asia Summit, President Duterte held a bilateral meeting with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe this afternoon. According to Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez III, the two leaders focused their talks on the administration's infrastructure projects that are proposed for financing from Japan. Diego, before departing from Bangkok, uh, unfortunately, President Duterte was not able to attend the third regional comprehensive economic partnership summit. But then the closing ceremony of the 35th ASEAN summit and related summits happens at 7.30 p.m. time here in Bangkok, in which the state leaders will witness the transfer of ASEAN chairmanship from Thailand to Vietnam. That's the update on the ongoing ASEAN summit here in Thailand. Diego? Thank you, Kath Dumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Heavy traffic on the North Luzon Expressway lasted for eight hours yesterday due to the influx of commuters entering Metro Manila after the weekend holiday. The management of expressways recommend the use of RFID. Find out why from Asher Kadapan Jr. 
The Radio Frequency Identification or RFID technology makes toll payment transactions on expressways faster, resulting in more convenient trips. The North Luzon Expressway or NLEX Management for One recommends the use of RFID among motorists. This, as electronic toll collection or ETC lanes at expressway toll gates use RFID, which just requires monetary credit or load. The use of RFID will alleviate the congestion of vehicles at toll plazas as there are dedicated lanes for motorists who use the technology. At dahil dumami na rin yung gumagamit ng RFID at tuloy-tuloy pa maraming uh, nag-a-avail, uh, yun, may, may dinagdag tayong uh, dedicated uh, RFID lanes dito sa the NLEX management estimates that 340,000 commuters used NLEX yesterday. The huge number of vehicles caused congestion at major toll plazas despite the augmentation of toll collection points from around 30 toll lanes on regular days to 60. To use RFID, visit the customer service centers on the expressways. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, Caloacan City. The number of fatalities after three strong earthquakes hit parts of Mindanao last month has gone up. Meanwhile, nearly 30,000 infrastructures were reportedly damaged in parts of Mindanao after the series of earthquakes. Marisol Montano reports why. The death toll in Mindanao after two strong earthquakes that devastated parts of the region last month climbs to 22 today, according to the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council or NDRRMC. Based on their updated situational report, the NDRRMC said 19 other fatalities were from Saxergen while the other three were from Davao del Sur. 424 individuals were injured due to the quake while two others are still reported missing. A total of 37,706 families or more than 188,000 people in 238 Madangais were affected by the magnitude 6.6 .6 and 6.5 earthquakes that occurred on October 29 and 31 respectively. Of these figures, 4,800 families or 24,000 persons are taking temporary shelter in 34 evacuation centers. According to Davao del Sur Provincial Disaster Management Officer Christopher Dunn, some of the evacuees have opted to stay in makeshift tents built in open areas because of aftershocks. Relief packs have been coming in from local government units and non-governmental organizations. However, Tan added the quick victims are in need of more food and water supplies and tents. The NDRRMC also reports over 29,000 infrastructures in Zamboanga Peninsula, northern Mindanao, Davao Region, Soxergen, and the Bangsamoy Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao were damaged by the tumbler. These include houses, schools, health facilities, commercial establishments, roads, bridges and other public structures the magnitude 6.5 quake that struck on october 31 was the third tumbler to hit mindanao last month a magnitude 6.1 quake recorded last october 16 while a magnitude 6.6 .6 quake was reported last october 29 killing several people and damaging homes and buildings the epicenters of these tremors were traced into Luden town in north cotabato Marcel Montano, UN TV News and Rescue, Davao City. Help continues to arrive for Mindanaoans affected by a 6.6 .6 earthquake that hit parts of southern Philippines a week ago. A C-130 Air Force plane also flies to Mindanao to send aid. My Bermudez details why in this report. More than 11 million pesos worth of food and non-food items have been sent to Davao and Soxergen regions, according to the Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD. Relatives of those who perished after the second strong tectonic earthquake to hit Mindanao last month have been provided with burial and financial assistance. The injured have also received financial help. The DSWD has provided psychosocial interventions and stress debriefing to those who need them. The agency's food Packs contain 6 kilograms of rice, 4 cans of sardines, 4 cans of corned beef, and 6 sachets of coffee mix. This package is good for 2 to 3 days for a family of 5. Kitchen kits, sleeping kits, laminated sack, 
infant dry cereals, regular slotted cartons, solar lamps, malong, drinking kits, and mosquito nets are also provided. As of uh, 6 a.m. of November 4, uh, a total of 11,843,306 pesos uh, worth of uh, uh, assistance uh, has already been uh, extended to unpo sa mga nasalanta ng mga lugar, uh, particularly sa. 37,706 families or 188,533 na mga individual na nas naapektuhan po sa 238 barangays both in region 11 and 12. Earlier today, a C-130 plane of the Philippine Air Force flew to Davao City to send relief. The plane transported a total of 32 tents, more than 200 boxes of assorted medical supplies, 200 pieces of folding beds, tires, and two sacks of blankets. Individuals or groups who wish to extend help to our earthquake-stricken compatriots in Mindanao as volunteers, just contact DSWD's hotline for details. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. It may be the modern times, but there are Filipinos who continue to show that the spirit of Bayanihan remains. Aiko Miguel has this story. Whatever catastrophe hits the country, Filipinos never fail to show one of one's values by any hand. This is once again demonstrated by the concerted efforts of different government agencies after the series of earthquakes in Mindanao, like the Philippine Coast Guard or PCG, which sent their personnel and trucks of relief goods to the region. According to Captain Armand Balilo, the PCG spokesman, a ship from Manila is also scheduled to be sent to Mindanao for additional relief operations and human assistance for Mindanaoans. So stand by pa rin ito. At kung may mga papadala pa, ay itong magta-transfer pa punta rin. So mananatili yung persa po ng Philippine Coast Guard, lahat po ng barko at personal na available doon sa Mindanao ay pinagagamit namin at uh, tinatalaga namin sa NDRMC para kung meron silang pangailangan ay makarespondi ng mabilis. The Philippine Air Force and the Department of Social Welfare and Development are also continuously sending assistance to Mindanao. Not only government agencies, but also private individuals are extending help. Like Techi's friends who prove how strong their friendship is, especially in helping fellow Filipinos. A trucking company that set aside their business and used their vehicles to deliver relief goods without asking for anything in return. Another Filipino visited DSWD Region 12 to voluntarily let his car be used to deliver goods and give assistance. Comelec spokesman director James Jimenez also posted a tweet. He says the Rotary Club Manila South chapter has started a fundraiser for Mindanaoans. He adds Filipinos can do more through concerted efforts. Such deeds are just a few of the ways to manifest that the spirit of Bayanihan continues among the Filipino race. It is never too late to give help to those in need. As what Mr. Public Service, Kuya Daniel Razon says, good deeds will bear no evil fruit. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Both the AFP Cavaliers and the DENR Warriors remain with zero losses in the first round elimination of UNTV Cup Season 8. Meanwhile, a multiple tie for the third place spot on Group A is possible after the game between the PITC Global Traders and the Ombudsman Graft Busters on November 17. Bernard Nadis tells us why. The DNR team ended Malacanang PSC's four-game winning streak after the Warriors beat Kamao yesterday, 80-77. El Rivera and Arturo Atablanco, who made the combined 27 points, led the Warriors to their fourth victory. Well, nagpapasalamat ako sa mga players kasi they responded well. Ano? Uh, ang challenge ko sa kanila, ibigay natin yung laban na ito para sa aming kasamaan na namatay. In line of duty, yun ay si Rolando uh, Corpus. Uh, nabaril siya, 
dahil sa paggampan ng kanyang tungkulin. Love sa estado sa defense, lalo na sa offense. Nag-struggle kami nung first half. Binigay namin yung laro na hihingan. BNR has not yet lost while Kamao now holds a 4-1 Windows record. Defending champion AP Cavalier still sits on Group A's top spot after defeating the Ombudsman Grubbusters 92-74. With this win, the AFP advanced to the second round eliminations with 5-0 win-loss record. Pero hindi pa naman doon natatapos yung pinakatrabaho namin. So we have to prepare the second round. PhilHealth Plus, on the other hand, still have high hopes to continue their campaign in the league this season. This after the Delio Aceron led hoopsters made it to a 24 win against SSS Kabalikat. PhilHealth is in the fourth place on Group A with two wins and three losses, followed by the Ombudsman Grubbusters with a 1 3 win loss record. A multiple tie in the third place is possible after the PITC Ombudsman match on November 17. Should the Global Traders win, the Grubbusters will get eliminated. But the Ombudsman must win by over 15 points to advance to the next round while Phil Health will suffer elimination. Bernard Dadis, Human TV News and Rescue, Pasig City. Welcome back to Why News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I'm Alex Belbazar, and here are the headlines. Two McKenney products test positive for African swine fever virus. Alleged Pampanga ninja cop found guilty for misconduct in another anomalous drug raid after a new round of review. The House of Representatives moves to postpone the May 2020 Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan polls to December 5, 2022. Oil firms to slash prices anew this week. And Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Domagoso speaks at a conference on climate and air quality in South Korea. Good evening. The Department of Agriculture prepares a national zoning plan to eradicate African swine fever in the country. The DA and the Food and Drug Administration want McKinney Food Corporation to explain why some its products are contaminated with the ASF virus. Ray Palayo tells us why. The seized items bought from local markets in Luzon tested positive for ASF viral DNA. The Department of Agriculture, or DA, is investigating the source of materials used in producing the skinless longaniza and picnic hot dog of McKinney Food Corporation intercepted together with unbranded products at Calapan Port, Mindoro on October 6. Based on the confirmatory test results, the products were positive for African swine fever virus. Kahit po lutuin siya, kahit po ano, uh, maiprocess siya, Kapag po tinest, kung may ASF po taba na ito, bigyan mo yung karte, makikita pa rin po yung practice. Okay. The DA and the Food and Drug Administration or FDA are asking the meat processing company to explain why their products are contaminated with the ASF virus. If we see some wrongdoing, then they, have a, they would have an administrative case with the FDA including possible revocation of course of their license to operate. In a statement, McKinney assures cooperation with the government in the investigation to trace the source of the virus. The FDA has inspected 63 of the 178 processed meat manufacturing plants in the country. All have been found negative for the hog disease virus and complying with the standards. Even the products from China confiscated at the Manila port last week tested positive for ASF. Visayas, Mindanao, and Mimaropa have yet to be declared as ASF-free or clean zone. This means pork products can be exported from these areas to other parts of the country. Luzon is a containment zone 
Region 1, 2, and 5 will be declared as protected zone. Region 3 and 4A are under the surveillance zone and Bulacan and Pampanga are infected zones. If you are the infected zone, uh, we may call it and the new cases and the new virus, you will have limited access to uh, market. So basically, infected zones can trade only with their fellow infected zone and of course uh, NCR. The Bureau of Animal Industry said the dry season will be favorable in controlling the spread of the virus. Magamagisa lang yan in a matter of days patay po yan, lalo na kung mainit yung environment. The DA appeals to hog raisers not to feed the animals with swill and not to trade hogs with ASF. Ray Pinayo, UNTV, Use and Rescue, Quezon City. The Philippine National Police formally dismissed the team leader of the anomalous Antipolo drug raid last May. But according to the PNPOIC, the said cop may apply for a motion for reconsideration. Harleen Delgado reports why. The team leader of the anomalous Antipolo drug raid in May, who is also one of the 13 policemen dubbed as Ninja Cops, has been dismissed from service. According to Philippine National Police Officer in Charge Police Lieutenant General Archie Gamboa, Police Lieutenant Joven de Guzman has been proven guilty of grave misconduct. The six others have earlier been dismissed. Authorities say three of them are also among the Ninja Cops allegedly involved in the Ago Bato scheme or the irregular drug raid in Pampanga six years ago. It can be recalled that Gamboa remanded back de Guzman's case to the PNP Internal Affairs Service and only meted a 59-day suspension after only less grave neglect of duty was filed against the cop. Gamboa clarified de Guzman can still appeal and file a motion for reconsideration in his office. Without his participation, the case went ahead. No? And it's not even required by law that he will answer. So pag hindi siya sumagot, ibig sabihin, wala siyang bagong ebidensya ang gustong ipresenta. The Department of the Interior and Local Governments is expected to release the result of its investigation on the 13 cops and resigned PNP Chief Police General Oscar Albayalde. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. The Duterte administration is confident the Philippines will hit the 2019 economic growth target. Rosalie Koss details why. The Duterte administration is targeting a 6 to 7 percent economic growth this year. We are certainly in a very good position to uh, hit the uh, lower end of the target of uh, 6 to 7 percent uh, this year. Based on the Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA's report, the first quarter growth rate was 5.6% and 5.5% in the second quarter. The government has mentioned such decline is due to the delay in the passage of the 2019 national budget as well as the conduct of the midterm elections which caused the government's underspending. Though the PSA has not yet released a report on the third quarter gross domestic product or GDP growth, Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez is confident the result will be better than in the first two quarters of 2019. Oh, no, no, definitely, definitely that's going to happen because our spending did ramp up in the, uh, uh, in the last, uh, the third quarter. We haven't quite caught up yet. I think we're about still 5% short. But uh, we're getting there. The Duterte administration still believes the country's yearly economic growth will be within the government's target band. To hit the lower end target, GDP growth has to hit 6.5% for the last two quarters. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. Senate will target to approve the proposed establishment of the Department of Disaster Resilience before 2019 ends. Meanwhile, the Senate leadership does not see any delay in the passage of the proposed 2020 budget. Nel Maribuhok reports why. Some senators consider the proposed establishment of Department of Disaster Resilience as an urgent bill. This after a series of earthquakes in North Cotabato and other parts of Mindanao in October. 
based on Senator Christopher Bongo proposal, the Department of Disaster Resilience will focus on disaster-related responsibilities. Presently, such responsibilities are being shared by several government agencies, including the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council or NDRRMC. Ang kakausapin ko rin po yung mga kapwa senador ko na bilisan natin ito and also the possibility of uh, amending the uh, National Building Code. Other lawmakers have expressed support to the proposal. Nagkakaturuan eh. Uh, because it's all coordinating council. It's just a coordinating council. Hindi po siya talagang isang departamento na nakaka, na, nakatutok uh, on, uh, for example, on um, uh, post-calamity uh, and even pre-calamity. Sa disaster, ang, may, ang importante dyan, may mananagot. Talagang may tutupad. Walang turuan ng turuan. According to Senate President Vicente Soto III, it's possible this proposal will be approved by Senate before the year ends. Eh, hindi siya masyadong problema katulad ng ibang departamento pinaplano na uh, nagsasalungat doon sa right sizing uh, bill. Meanwhile, Senate Majority Leader Juan Miguel Zubiri does not see any delay in the passage of the proposed 2020 national budget. Ang uh, consensus na ating mga kasamahan sa Senado ay uh, maganda naman ay uh, ipapasa natin as soon as possible time. The Senator is hopeful there won't be a repeat of what happened in the 2019 budget after its passage was delayed for a half year. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The lower house of Congress approves the bill postponing the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections slated for May next year. The Commission on Elections, meanwhile, says it will focus on the process of restarting the continuing registration for the polls. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. The lower house of Congress resumed session today. One of the bills the Solons approved is House Bill 4933. The bill seeks to postpone the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections to December 2022. 194 voted in favor, while 6 voted not in favor of the postponement. Incumbent Barangay and SK officials will remain in post until the next BSK election in December 2022 if such legislation passes. Meanwhile, the Commission on Elections or COMELEC says it has anticipated the move from the House of Representatives. COMELEC says it will focus on continuing the registration for the BSKE in its preparation for the 2022 national and local elections. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. The Philippine National Police Academy seeks the explanation of five of its cadets linked to an alleged hazing of a plea to explain. Meanwhile, the PNP officer in charge says they won't tolerate any form of maltreatment in the academy. Harleen Delgado explains why. A freshman cadet has filed a complaint against his five fellow cadets over an alleged hazing incident. Last week, cadet 4th class John Desiderio was reportedly rushed to the hospital due to stomach pain. Desiderio remains confined at the East Avenue Medical Center. In a statement, the Philippine National Police Academy, or PNPA, says the five identified cadets will be given 24 hours to explain before an administrative charge is filed against them. But PNP officer in charge, Police Lieutenant General Archie Gamboa, assures the cadets involved will be dismissed from the academy. He says the involved officers, including the squad and platoon leaders, have been stripped of authority. We will get to the bottom of this. And because may nangyaring ganon, and indeed it is maltreatment, we will see to it that these cadets who are involved will be dismissed from PNPA. On April 12, 2019, President Rodrigo Duterte signed Republic Act 11279, or an act transferring the Philippine National Police Academy and the National Police Training Institute from the Philippine Public Safety College to the Philippine National Police. Bigyan nyo naman ang chance ang PNP, no? We are still on the transition. So kung bad start man tayo, then let it start that way. No? But we will do our best na hindi na ito mangyari ulit. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue Camp Krame. The Metro Rail Transit Line 3 begins its rail replacement tonight. The move is part of the government's MRT3 rehabilitation project. Joe Anano tells us why. 
MRT3 maintenance provider Sumitomo Mitsubishi Heavy Industries is all set for the rail replacement of the entire train system beginning tonight. The rail replacement will be done daily from 11 p.m. to 4.30 a.m. so that the normal train operations won't be affected. Pag-start tayo sa Station 10 which is uh, Binon Buendia. So nalatag ngayon doon, ang gagawin ngayon dyan is mamayang gabi tatanggalin yung luma, no? babaklasin yung luma. At pag natanggal yung luma, ipapalit yung bago at ikakabit ulit. Once completed, the speed of the trains will be adjusted to 60 km per hour from the current 30 kph. The interval of train arrival will also go down to more than 3 minutes from the current 8 minutes. In turn, this shortens the passenger's waiting time at the station platform. The rail replacement is also expected to help with the deployment of the China-made Dalian trains. Pero once na full replacement na natin yung buong rail sa buong ruta ng uh, MRT3, then, pwede na natin mag-start ng, ano, ng testing ng uh, 60 kph for Dalian. The rail replacement is expected to be completed by July 2021. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Several oil companies have announced another rollback in pump prices, effective this week. In separate advisories, Petron and Filipina Shell Petroleum said they will slash the price of gasoline by 10 cents per liter, diesel by 25 cents, and kerosene by 10 cents a liter. Sea Oil Philippines and PTT Philippines have also announced the implementation of the same adjustments to take effect on Tuesday, November 5, 6 a.m. Petrogas said it will also implement the same price rollback. Last week, most firms slashed the price of gasoline by 45 cents per liter and diesel by 10 cents. The composition of cousins Madonna Brasas and Pau Ortiz was able to make it to a Song of Praise Music Festival Year 8 Grand Finals. The two say writing a praise song is a way to thank the Almighty. Nina Armilio tells us why. Madonna Brosses is an online seller. Most of the time, her hands are full to tend to customers here and there. But that did not hinder Madonna from writing her first worship song. To her surprise, after deciding to join ASOP in its eighth year, the judges gave 92.33% to Aleiko to bring it to the December monthly finals. Nagpapasalamat ako sa Diyos. Dahil sa pagkakataon na ito, yung makapagbigay ng papuri sa, sa Panginoon, yun yung higit na, na ikinakagal ako. To make the song even more beautiful, Madonna partnered with her cousin Pau Ortiz, a singer-instrumentalist who added melodies for the song on 6-8 time signature. May mga suggestions na very informative at nakakaroon ako mas maraming knowledge when it comes to arrangement. Multi-talented singer-actor Brennan Espertinas will interpret the easy listening ballad. It's going to be Madonna and Pal's first time on ASOP's grand final stage, while Brennan has always welcomed performing in ASOP since year one. Join them and the ASOP crowd in celebrating a night of praise and music at the New Frontier Theater in Araneta City, Cubao on November 10, 7 in the evening. Support Alayko and your favorite ASOP Year 8 Grand Finals entries by online voting and power viewing. Just visit ASOPTV.com. Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And to finally complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. The Philippine Navy has a new asset which is equipped with radar that can detect other ships and even submarines that enter the Philippine territory. Let's find out the ship's other capabilities as Dante Amento reports. BRP Conrado Yap arrived in Zamboanga City this morning. This is the newest and only anti-submarine asset of the Philippine Navy donated by South Korea. The ship has been to different parts of Mindanao as part of its show, the flag mission. From western Mindanao, it will proceed to Balawan, particularly in the West Philippine Sea. Captain Marco Buena, the ship's commanding officer, says BRP Conrado Yap also fits to be deployed in the western Mindanao area. 
Like in the southern Philippine Sea where some incidents of sea jacking, piracy, smuggling and even incursion have occurred. Kahit saan naman tayo ay pwede, kung anumang misyon ang ibigay ng headquarters, be it sa West Philippine Sea, sa Western Mindanao Command, o kaya sa Northern area, areas ng Philippines. BRP Conrado Yap's capabilities include anti-submarine warfare and maritime security operations. It is equipped with radars that detect other ships and even submarines that enter the country's territory. Authorities admit the Southern Philippine Sea is so vast that it needs such asset for monitoring. The mga transit corridors na hindi masyadong nabibisita, yun ang magandang deployment ng BRP Conrado Yap. Captain Buena adds, two additional ships are expected to arrive in the country next year. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Zamboanga City. Meanwhile, Manila Mayor Isko Moreno de Magoso is now in South Korea. He delivered a speech on his plans for the city to address pollution, which for him has been left unaddressed for years. Bernard Dadis tells us why. Former United Nations Secretary Ban Ki-moon has invited Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno de Magoso to the 2019 International Conference on Air Pollution and Climate Change in Seoul, South Korea. Ban Ki-moon sits as the chairman of the National Council on Climate and Air Quality. In his speech, Mayor Domagoso enumerated his administration's actions to fight pollution which has been neglected for years, he said. I dream of vertical housing with hydroponics for our informal sectors to respond to the issue of housing, livelihood and food, of solar rooftops to effectively manage our carbon footprints based out of jeeps. You know, jeeps, I hope you're familiar with the word jeeps, and if you have time, you Google it. And buses with second-hand engines you must start not through a system of penalty, but initiatives. Manila City's move will include creating 1,600 hectares of green space in the city, recommended by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, the renovation of public parks like the Mehan Garden and others, as well as the installation of vertical gardens in the busiest streets of the city. The installation of vertical gardens at Jones Bridge is ongoing. Next will be on Taft, Lawton and Espana Avenues. The measures also includes expanding the so-called last lang of the city, the Arroceros Park. Manila will create more open green space. That we guarantee you. It will use technology to ensure that air monitoring becomes a daily undertaking and strategic areas are identified to comply with air quality standards. Mayor Isko added that renewable energy will be integrated on his plans for the city, like installations of solar power street lamps and solar panels to more than 100 schools in Manila. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Malacanang refuted news that President Rodrigo Duterte did not receive a football jersey during the signing ceremony of Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN and Federation Internationale de Football Association or FIFA. Charlize Longbowen will tell us why. Malacanang slammed Twitter user The Professional Heckler for making fun of President Duterte belatedly receiving his football jersey during the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN and the Federation International de Football Association or FIFA. On Sunday, the professional heckler, a known critic of the administration on Twitter, tweeted a 66-second shortened video of the ceremony where the ASEAN leaders received their own jerseys with their names on them from the FIFA, but Duterte received his last. However, Heckler poked fun at the event when Duterte did not receive his jersey immediately and was instead skipped. Heckler likened this to a toddler not getting a candy. 
In a statement Sunday afternoon, Panelo offered to Heckler's tweet as an attack from the political opposition. He said the false news can easily be debunked by looking at the official photos released by the palace. Apparently, the, this rambunctious political opposition will not stop at anything. Every opportunity presented to it, it will use to put the president in a bad light. But no matter what they do, every time they throw mad at this president, the more acceptable this president becomes. Panella said Heckler's tweet was a predictable hate campaign against the president since it followed the fake Bangkok Post headline which said that Thai King Maha Wajiralongkorn ordered Duterte to behave during the ASEAN summit. The palace official then urged Duterte's critics to start accepting the fact that the president's popularity among those who voted for him will not be decreased. Cherise Longbowen, UNCV News and Rescue, Bangkok, Thailand. In other news, an oil spill that is stretching across Brazil's northeast region has reached a rare coral reef in the country, underwater footage shows. From the late August to end of October, the oil washed ashore in nine states, according to federal police, closing hundreds of beaches and killing scores of animals. Volunteers trying to clean up the crude without proper equipment have also fallen sick. Brazil has so far collected some 2,000 tons of sludge from its beaches in continuing cleanup efforts while working to rehabilitate birds and sea turtles coated in the black thick crude. Brazilian investigators said on Friday a Greek flagship carrying Venezuelan crude was the source of oil tearing Brazil's coastline over the past two months. But the firm running the ship said its voyage finished uneventfully. Air pollution in the north of India has reached unbearable levels. In many areas of Delhi, air quality deteriorated into the hazardous category with the potential to cause respiratory illnesses. Kath Dumaraos reports. Air pollution in New Delhi and surrounding towns reached the worst level so far this year on Sunday, with authorities in the world's most polluted capital city having already declared a public health emergency and ordered the closure of schools. The air quality index measuring levels of PM2.5 tiny particulate matter in the air deteriorated to above 900, way over the 500 level that qualifies as severe plus. According to Gopal Krisha, a Delhi resident, for him, it's suffocating and they feel like coughing. They thought that the light showers will make the weather better and the pollution level will improve, but it doesn't feel like it yet. Aside from the harm it was doing to the lungs of some 40 million people living in the capital region, the smog was so bad more than 30 flights were diverted from Delhi airport due to poor visibility. Roads looked deserted as large numbers of people stayed home rather than expose themselves to the noxious atmosphere outside. Authorities in Delhi declared a public health emergency and closed schools and all construction activity today. The city government restricted the use of private vehicles on the capital's roads under an odd-even scheme based on license plates. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. An oven has been launched to the International Space Station, or ISS, for astronauts to bake chocolate chip cookies in. A cargo craft containing the specially designed space oven and baking ingredients took off from the U.S. state of Virginia on Saturday. Astronauts are set to test what high impact heat and zero gravity have on the shape and consistency of the cookies. The experiment is being dubbed as the first instance of baking in space. A musical director who joined ASAP for the first time and a singer who sang a praise song in a competition for the first time met last March in a Song of Praise music festival. Their collaboration will be witnessed at the ASAP Year 8 Grand Finals Night. Nina Armilio tells us why. the 
first time for School of Rock instructor Daryl Joseph Villanueva to join a Song of Praise music festival in March. A professional in his field, being a musical director and a rock musician, he was able to come up with Dios ng Katotohanan, which was described by multifaceted Jeffrey Hidalgo during the March monthly finals to have a glam rock feel. Daryl admits being agnostic before, but when he finally proved to himself that he has found God, he decided to write a praise song to thank the Creator for experiencing something more than finding gold. Yung kantang Diyos ng Katotohanan ay tungkol sa emosyon na iyong nararamdaman at mga isipin na naiisip mo nung una mong narinig yung aral, una mong natutunan at una mong tinanggap ang uh, lingap ng Panginoon. Back in 2001, his former bandmates told him there's ASOP as a praise songwriting competition and they invited him to join. For Daryl, since that day, his ASOP journey has not been in vain. Power belter Nina Espinosa has been chosen to interpret Daryl's masterpiece. It's her first time to land on ASOP's grand final stage. For her, the experience of singing a praise song in a contest is like no other. Excited ako kasi alam ko marami ako may influence na mga rakista dyan. Rakista dyan guys. Na, na pwede natin na may influence na mapalapit sa Panginoon. Masaya ako kung, kung, kung sa ibang bagay nagagawa ko siya, di ba? Bakit hindi natin ibigay kay Lord ng buong buo, ng walang kapalit? For the panel of judges who gave the song a thumb up, Nina's voice is fit for Daryl's work. Listen to the lyrics and melody of Dios ng Katotohanan and your favorite ASAP Year 8 Grand Finals entries on asaptv.com slash poll. Don't forget to vote online and power view their music videos. For more details on the big event on November 10 at the New Frontier Theater, visit asaptv.com. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this September 4, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo, and before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. The seized items bought from local markets in Luzon tested positive for ASF viral DNA. Kahit po lutuin siya, kahit po ano, uh, ma-process siya, kapag po tinest, kung may ASF po taba na ito, begin with yung karne, magpakikita pa rin po yung frame. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, no, definitely, definitely that's going to happen because our spending did ramp up in the, uh, uh, in the last, uh, the third quarter. We haven't quite caught up yet. I think we're about still 5% short. But uh, we're getting there. We will get to the bottom of this. And because may nangyaring ganon, and indeed it is maltreatment, we will see to it that these cadets who are involved will be dismissed from PNP. Bigyan nyo naman ang chance ang PNP, no? We are still on the transition. So kung bad start man tayo, then let it start that way. No? But we will do our best na hindi na ito mangyari ulit.